I'm so sorry, friend, but we don't need you today. Hello, fiber friends, and welcome to another spinning tutorial. Before I got my first spinning wheel, I learned how to spin on a drop spindle, very similar in style to these. Spindles are a fairly simple tool that have been used throughout cultures around the world as far back as pre-recorded history. To talk about every different type of spindle would take a lot of videos. <laughs> so today we're just going to talk about the top whirl drop spindle and it will look something like this. They come in different styles, colors, uh, made of different materials. This one is acrylic, this one is wood, sometimes they can be printed plastic. But the basic concept is that you will have a hook on the top, like these, and there will be a whirl or some sort of disc, and it will be on the top with most of the shaft coming down through the bottom of the spindle. When you're considering what kind of spindle to start out with, keep in mind that in general, heavier spindles are used for thicker yarn, bulkier yarn. Lighter spindles are used for thinner yarn. This is a Snyder spindle and it's called a 45. It can be a little tricky to get the fiber going onto the spindle, so that's why we use a leader. Take a length of yarn, this is just some leftover acrylic that I have, and I'm going to tie it into a loop. Then I will take the spindle shaft so that it just uh, makes a hitch around the spindle. Now I can put the fiber up through the hook on the top and I am ready to spin. Starting a leader with a loop like this eliminates any possibility that you might unspin your leader accidentally and have it break when you're trying to get your spin going. To start spinning, of course, we need to add twist. There are different ways that you can add twist to the spindle and usually you'll probably try a few ways and settle on what's most comfortable for you and also what works for that particular spindle. Many people like to just give it a flick like that to get it going, but if you have a longer shaft, uh, this method works just fine, and you can just <laughs> roll it right off your leg like that, and you're off to start. If you can draft the fiber and put twist into the fiber, you can probably spin it with a spindle. This is a bat that I had in my stash. I just grabbed a handful and tore it into strips, just like that. It is ready to spin. I have the twist coming into the spindle. Before it starts to spin the other way, I'm going to hold on to it either with my knees, I could tuck it under my leg, I could hold it in a pillow, whatever works for you to keep the twist from coming out of the spindle. So I take my fiber and my leader and remember how we have that loop on our leader? I can push the fiber just through the end of the loop, just like that, and now it is secure. It's not gonna come off or go anywhere. And I'll keep this little fuzzy bit tipped over the top, and now, look at that. We're spinning! The twist is going to travel up the fiber. And that is the whole idea of what we're doing here with this park and draft method. We are putting twist into this working section of our fiber, and then we are going to, in a controlled way, pull the fiber thinner, and then let the twist go into that thinner section. Once we have a length that is too long to easily work with, we want to wrap it around our spindle. This is my leader right now that I'm wrapping on, and then here comes the yarn we just made. You don't wanna wrap it too short to where the drafting zone is, this area that you are adding twist into your fiber supply. So make sure that you have enough length of working area to add that extra twist. And then we repeat. So we will add the twist into the spindle and before it begins to untwist, we will park the spindle 
And now we will draft our fiber. If your fiber is difficult to draft, it's probably because too much twist has gotten up into this area. So if it's gone too far, you can untwist it a little bit with your fingers so that there's no twist in this area past your pinch point, and that will make it easier to draft. Then you can slide your fingers up to let the extra twist into the fiber and just keep on going. Just like that until your twist is distributed all the way through and this is what forms our cob. That's what the fiber is called when it's on the shaft of the spindle. Here we go, ready to start again. Rinse and repeat <laughs> and you are spinning. That's all there is to it. It's very simple. As you get better and better with your park and draft, you will, you will realize that you don't need to hold the spindle while you're drafting. You can keep the spindle spinning. Once you get to that point, everything starts to feel very smooth. You've at that point built up the muscle memory in your hands and fingers to keep the spindle spinning. I am just letting the spindle freely spin and I'm drafting as it spins. Then when I finish that section, I wind it back onto the shaft of the spindle and bring it up to the hook. One of the number one questions that I get from my videos is, how do you finish the yarn? So stick with me till the end of this video because I will definitely show you how to finish the yarn that you spin on your spindle. Let's talk about a few troubleshooting tips. One of the jokes that a lot of spinners say about spindles is that a drop spindle is called a drop spindle because when you're learning to use it, you're always dropping it. I was when I first started to spin. So what's the reason that you might be dropping your spindle? Well, it could be a couple things, so let's talk about each possibility. One is that your spindle is too heavy and your yarn that you're making is too thin, so the weight of the spindle is going to actually snap and break your working yarn. If that's the case, draft thicker or use a lighter spindle. Another reason that you might be dropping your spindle is that you could be drafting too far for the amount of twist that you have to distribute into your working area. If that's the case, add more twist. Something else that can cause the yarn to become weak is over twist. There's a sweet spot between having enough twist and having too much twist that your yarn actually becomes brittle. That's when it can snap. You will want to draft more for the amount that you've twisted it or wind it on before you give it another spin to add more twist. On either end, adding it sooner, drafting farther, you're going to be distributing that twist further out across your working area. Something else that can happen when your spindle is spinning is that your fiber can fall down, especially if you hold it like this where it's running right along your working area. And if your fiber is falling down next to this, it can get caught in the twisting working yarn and it can make an absolute mess. In fact, while I was filming this video, I did that very thing. So here's a little blooper for your entertainment. to have either a small enough quantity that it can be held in your hand and not dangle down or a long enough piece that you can flip it over your arm. Sometimes it helps if you can flip it maybe over your shoulder 
And then also you can use a wrist distaff. If you're interested in that, I have a whole video that will explain everything you never knew you needed to know about distaffs. You can check that out. One other final thing to talk about when you are spinning with a spindle is about the weight that is added to it as you wind your yarn onto it. The more fiber that you add onto the shaft of your spindle, the heavier it becomes. If you're winding it so that you have a lot of weight down here and you're not using a park and draft method, you're just letting it uh, drop and spin, it can start to wobble like this, which can make it frustrating and difficult to draft. So winding the cob onto the shaft of the spindle seems unimportant, but it is worth it to take a few extra moments while you wind on to keep this organized. This is my finished spin. So once you've finished your spin, you need to decide if you're going to leave your yarn as a singles yarn or if you are going to ply your yarn. For the most part, I prefer to ply my yarn. Reasons for using a single or applied yarn are complex, and I will have some more videos coming up to talk about all of the reasons why you would choose one or the other, so make sure you're subscribed. But for this yarn, I'm going to create a two-ply, and since I'm using one spindle for this project, I need to get this off the spindle. I am going to use a ball winder, and that will give me the center pull ball I need to ply the yarn. As promised, and if you're still with me this far into the video, uh, this is the very first hand spun project that I did, and I did spin this on a drop spindle. This was made from two bats, and the spindle that I used as my very first spindle was a dowel rod with a craft wheel that you would use for a wooden craft or toy car. You can find the packs of these wheels at any craft shop or online. They're very, very inexpensive. And then it was a cup hook on the top. That was my very first spindle. It was a drop spindle. Um, and I made this hat. So I just want this to be an encouragement that if you haven't started spinning and you're curious about spinning, spindle spinning is a great way to get started and you can absolutely make very, very usable yarn. A couple things that are worth mentioning when you create your center pull ball. The main thing when you wind a single that has energy in it, which means it has a lot of twist in it, is that you want to make sure that you hold the tension on the single as you're putting it onto the ball winder. If you release that tension and it gets floppy like that, it'll start to get curly cues and it can create a tangled mess. So make sure you hold that tension steady. The other thing is when I take the yarn off of the ball winder, I want to match up the ends. Usually you can find the, the beginning end by pulling the piece off of the top of the ball winder. It's kind of how they are set up. And I lay them next to each other and let the twist begin because that means they aren't going to unravel. They're holding each other together in a twist and this is the beginning of our plied yarn. This is what I will attach to the leader on the drop spindle. I have the leader coming up and through the hook on the top of the spindle. So I'll put the two ends of the yarn, ooh, almost dropped it. I'll put the two ends of the yarn through the leader and fold it up and that gives enough of a hold to get it started without it unraveling. Now, when I spun the yarn, I was, I was running the spindle off of this leg. This is my left leg. But to ply the yarn, I have to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to actually switch hands at this point. Find a method that works for you, but you're gonna need to, if you've been running it off of your leg, run it off of your other leg. If you use your hand to give it twist, then you will need to use your other hand or twist the other way. From there, I can do the park and draft method again and let the twist come up into the two ends of the yarn as it comes off of the center pull ball. And once the twist has started to come up, I'll wind it onto the spindle. 
and keep going until the whole ball has gotten opposite twist. When you ply, it's a great time to practice letting the spindle drop and dangle while it spins around because there's a less chance that you're going to snap your single or uh, have the twist go too far because you're plying. It's kind of a safe time. Or if you wanna just take it nice and slow and very controlled, you can also do the park and draft method as well. As I go, I'm pulling the yarn out and holding it under tension and then letting the twist come up into the yarn and the weight of the spindle helps to give some tension. If you just let it go kind of willy-nilly, you can get those curly cues stuck in there, and that's not what we want. To create the cob that has that kind of tapered look, I comb, um, I start at the top and go down and back up and then down one further and then back up and down one further so it's always building this way which makes the top portion much thicker that keeps the spindle so it doesn't get too wobbly while you're spinning once you've finished plying and you have your yarn ready to take off of your spindle i highly recommend investing or making a small netty knotty this one does a yard is great to take projects off of spindles because they tend to not be very large projects and so i will put it into a skein then i will fill a bowl full of warm water and press the fiber down into the warm water i'll let it rest for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then i'll take the fiber out squeeze out the excess water if you have a salad spinner you can spin it with a salad spinner and that will cut down your drying time a lot. And then I will just hang the yarn up from a hanger until it's dry. And at that point, it's finished. If you're interested in learning more about spindles and spindle spinning, I highly recommend the book by Abby Frankmont called Respect the Spindle. She is the absolute expert guru in the spinning world and she knows her stuff. So check out her book, Respect the Spindle. I'll see you all next Tuesday for another Tuesday tutorial. Happy spinning.